What's up guys, it's Chris Majestic, and after what feels like an eternity, it's finally time to review the Epson LS500. So with Epson being one of the most popular projector manufacturers, it's no wonder so many people have been anticipating their first ultra short throw 4K laser projector. Now, if you're like me, you probably aren't a big fan of these manufacturers calling these laser TVs, but the name is starting to grow on me and honestly, it sounds a lot better than ultra short throw laser projector. So to keep things simple, I'll probably be referring to this as a laser TV in this video. Anyways, this is the Epson LS500, a 4K laser TV that comes in a few different variations in the US. You can get it in either black or white and it comes with either a 100 or 120 inch screen. The 100 inch version retails for about $5,000 and the 120 inch version retails for $6,000. Now I know most of you are going to say this price is crazy high, but it does come with the screen and I'll tell you that with these laser TVs an ALR or ambient light rejecting screen is one of the most important parts. An ALR screen can be the difference between a washed out ugly image and a bright image with great contrast that blocks out the ambient light in the room. Now I don't have Epson's ALR screen that comes with this projector with me today, but I do have two great ultra short throw ALR screens that work perfectly with it. So aside from the screen, what else do you get with this projector? Well, you get a remote with a few app buttons since it runs Android TV, a power cord, and of course the projector. So as you can see, I opted for the black version and I like that Epson gave us the ability to choose since color is always a hot topic. As far as design, the first thing you'll notice about the LS500 is the large hood that sticks out from the top of the unit. Well, under this hood is the huge lens. Some people might like it and some might hate it, but the benefit to such a big lens is better focus uniformity, which we'll talk about later. I will say that the black version does make the lens hood a bit more inconspicuous. Aside from the lens, the design is fairly minimalistic. The front cover is removable and reveals two small 10 watt speakers, navigation buttons that you'll probably never use, a focus slider, and a hidden compartment with an HDMI port for the included Android TV stick that is very similar to other projectors we've seen. Around the back, we have the rest of the ports, which includes a LAN port, which isn't for the smart TV interface, but can be used with Epson's eye projection software, two HDMI 2.0 ports with arc support, a service port, a USB port, stereo output, and RS-232. And when it comes to specs, this projector has quite a bit to offer. So this is a three LCD projector that produces a whopping 4,000 ANSI lumens, making it the brightest ultra short throw that I've reviewed on the channel. And if you're not familiar with three LCD projectors, I did a video about this a while ago, and I'll link it here for you to check it out if you're interested. One important thing to note is that 3LCD often appears brighter than DLP with the same brightness rating since 3LCD usually produces brighter colors than DLP. And this projector uses the same pixel shifting system used in other Epson projectors, which is known as 4K Pro UHD. Now, even though the name sounds like it does 4K, the system produces about half the resolution of 4K, but it is still incredibly sharp and practically looks like 4K from the average seating position. It also supports HDR10, HLG, as well as 3D. And another important spec to note is that Epson claims less than 17 milliseconds of input lag, which I'll test out later in the video. All right, so now on to installation. Now again, I don't have the fixed frame screen that comes with it, but from what I can see from the videos out there, it looks like a typical fixed frame screen assembly process, which usually takes a couple of hours. But the Vivid Storm S Pro Tension floor screen that I have with me today couldn't be easier to set up. You literally take it out of the box, plug it in, and you have a beautiful ALR screen in just a few seconds. So this is the 100 inch version of this screen, which retails for about $1,200 and comes in a variety of different sizes. And if you're wondering how this projector looks on a fixed frame screen, I'll be using the 100 inch screen that was included with the Hisense L5, which uses the same screen material that most of the other fixed frame UST projector screens use. So like all laser TVs, it's important to make sure that you get the calculations perfect since there's really no room for you to easily shift the image like you can with the standard throw projector. Now, when it comes to the LS500 projector in particular, one important thing to note is the throw ratio. 
It is ultimately an ultra short throw, but with the 0.28 throw ratio, the back of the projector needs to be about 15 inches from the 100 inch screen and about 20 inches away from 120 inch screen. This means that you need a really, really deep stand or you have to pull the stand pretty far away from the wall. Now I'll tell you right up front, this is probably my biggest gripe with this projector, but if you can get past this, it still has quite a bit to offer. Now what is cool is that if you have the space to move it even farther from the wall, it does have a digital zoom so you can make the image slightly smaller and move the image around to get it aligned on the screen. And that's one of the things I love about Epson projectors. They give you a ton of menu options and features. You get frame interpolation, several HDR settings, a bunch of color settings, multiple HDMI CEC options, and a bunch of installation options, including blanking, digital zoom, and keystone correction. This makes it one of the easier laser TVs to install as long as you have the space for it to sit pretty far away from the wall. Now you might think that the huge lens mixed with the fact that this sits so far from the wall would mean that it has some sort of eye protection sensors. Well, unfortunately it doesn't have any proximity sensors. Now the hood surrounding the lens does help a little bit, but if you have small children, you might wanna keep them away from it, especially considering how bright it is. So like many of the other laser TVs we've seen over the past year or so, the LS500 runs Android TV from an HDMI dongle. Now, despite some people having an issue with this, I think it's fine and the dongle didn't give me any major issues. I was able to stream 4K HDR content over Wi-Fi just fine and I was able to access all of the popular streaming apps, including Netflix. Now, one issue I did have with Android TV is that I was not able to connect to any 5G signals. It's almost as if it either doesn't have a 5G radio or if there was something wrong with it. Either way, I was able to stream most of my content without any issues as long as it wasn't too high of a bitrate. I did notice that some reviewers got two remotes with the LS500, but I only got the one voice remote. And unfortunately, this remote isn't backlit, but it worked fine for just about everything. Now, if you're used to Epson's typical backlit remote with a bunch of shortcut buttons for projector settings, then you might have a problem with this, but I found that it worked just fine. I was able to use the Google Assistant voice functions just fine, and the overall experience was good. All right, so now onto the thing you came here for, which is picture quality. Well, with the 4000 ANSI Lumen rating, this thing is bright. I mean, really bright. Whether you go with 100 or 120 inch, you won't have any trouble seeing video from this projector in a bright room, as long as you're using an ambient light rejecting screen. Being a three LCD projector, the color brightness is fantastic and the colors are accurate and vibrant. And one of the major benefits of three LCD is that it doesn't produce the rainbow effect like DLP projectors, so they can be easier on the eyes for some people. Now the one downside to it being three LCD is that it doesn't produce a true 4K image with 8 million pixels on the screen. So it produces about half the resolution of 4K or about 4 million pixels. Now that being said, the image is razor sharp so you have to get really close to the screen to see the difference and I think the brightness and color makes up for the sharpness. So the LS500 has four picture modes, dynamic, bright cinema, cinema, and gaming mode. Dynamic mode is the brightest but has a green bias. So like most Epson projectors, I found that bright cinema looks the best for most content since it's super bright with accurate color. Now at first I assumed that cinema mode would look the best but it kinda just dims the overall image and doesn't really add much contrast. And game mode is sort of a toss between bright cinema and cinema even though it did appear to have slightly warmer whites. Now considering how bright this projector is, if you're watching it at night, it may be a little bit too bright. So in a dark room, I found that it looks as best somewhere between 80 and 90% light output. Now when it comes to HDR, you'd be hard pressed to find a laser TV that does a better job than the LS500. The colors look fantastic and shadow detail looks good, even though the black levels aren't the greatest. The highlights also look great and you can go into the settings and increase the HDR effect, which flattens the image further to get better detail in bright areas. Now increasing this setting does lower the brightness so you might have to experiment to find what you like. I found that eight was the magic number for this setting, which I believe is the same setting I used on other Epson projectors. Either way, there are several settings you can adjust to get an image that suits your taste and with so much brightness, the HDR from this projector looks better than most since HDR has a tendency and see the dark in the overall image. And if you thought HDR content looked great, then SDR content looks just as good. 
And the upscaling of standard content was also really good, which is helpful considering this is marketed as a TV replacement. With so much brightness and high color accuracy, this projector would work in pretty much any room. Now, when it comes to black levels, I had a feeling that they weren't gonna be the greatest considering how bright the projector is, and this was certainly the case. I'd say the black levels are about on par with most of the laser TVs that I reviewed on the channel. They're not horrible, but it's certainly noticeable that black shows up as dark gray, especially in dark movie scenes. I was hoping that cinema mode would help with this, and it does help a little, but again, it darkens the entire image, which didn't help much. If you're not super picky about black levels, then you might think, is fine, but I'm probably just spoiled by the ultra black from the Epson 5050UB. Now gaming is where this projector really shines. If I haven't mentioned it enough times, this thing is crazy bright, which is something that a lot of gamers look for. But most importantly, this thing has fantastic input lag numbers. I was expecting low input lag since Epson's three LCD projectors tend to get good numbers, but I certainly wasn't expecting to see the numbers dip under 16 milliseconds. Using the HD Fury Diva, I got an average input lag of about 13 milliseconds with 4K and about 19 milliseconds with 1080p. This is definitely the best input lag I've seen from a laser TV so far. The only thing that comes close is the Hisense L5, which is around 24 milliseconds with 4K, but the color accuracy isn't nearly as good and it's not as bright as the Epson. Another place where this projector really shines is with 3D content. The one thing that usually hurts 3D is that it dims the image down quite a bit. Well, with this projector being so bright, you still get a pretty bright image, and since the colors are so vivid, it makes for a great 3D experience. Now with all the laser TVs that I reviewed so far, they've all had halfway decent speakers mounted on the front, so I expected the same with this projector. Well, unfortunately, I was wrong. The 10 watt speakers built into this projector are probably the worst I've heard. The sound was really tiny and heavily distorted when turned up. Thankfully, it comes with arc support as well as a stereo output so you can easily connect it to a home theater receiver. And when it comes to projector noise, well, the fans do produce quite a bit of hum. Now, it's not an annoying high-pitched hum or anything like that, but it is noticeable in both the dynamic and bright cinema modes. And if you do drop the light output down to around 90% or less, it will decrease some of the fan noise. Now this has to be expected considering a 4000 lumen rating and being one of the brightest projectors I reviewed on the channel, I had to give it some slack. But considering it sits right in front of the screen and hopefully you're using separate speakers, it shouldn't be a big deal. All right, so there's a lot to love about this projector, but like all products, it's not perfect. So what are the things I don't like? Well, there are four things to consider. The very first thing is the design. I'm personally not a fan of the big lens sticking out of the top of the projector. I understand that this brings benefits like better focus uniformity, but I like the idea of a laser TV blending into the furniture and this sort of brings extra attention to it. And one of the side effects of the periscope lens is that it does have a tendency to cast some light beneath the screen. It's not distracting or anything like that, but it is something I noticed. The second consideration is a pretty big one and that's the throw ratio. If you go with a 100 inch screen then there will be about a 15 inch gap between the back of the projector and the screen and about a 20 inch gap with a 120 inch screen. This is a pretty big gap and will either require you to slide your TV stand far from the wall or buy a really deep stand. And the third thing to consider is black levels. Now again, the black levels are about on par with other laser TVs, but considering the price tag and the fact that it's three LCD, I was hoping for slightly better black levels. I will admit that it would be pretty hard to produce a 4,000 lumen image with great black levels, so I guess you have to take the good with the bad. Either way, they aren't really that bad, and I think the other benefits outweigh this. And the last issue is with the speakers. Now I wasn't gonna mention this as an issue since most people are probably gonna use it with external speakers, but considering the price and how good the speakers are on other laser TVs, I was hoping the speakers would at least be decent, but I have to admit they sound pretty bad. Just make sure that if you planned on relying on the internal speakers that you factor in some sort of sound system in your budget. 
But even with those few caveats, I think this is a fantastic projector. The brightness and picture quality were good enough for me to consider pulling my TV stand farther away from the wall. With the 4000 lumen rating, high color accuracy, insane input lag for gaming, and great HDR performance, Epson set the bar pretty high when it comes to image quality. And I do also have the Epson LS300. And if you really don't like the look of the LS500, the LS300 does look a little more sleek, but it is only 1080p. With so many great options out there, it's gonna be hard for me to make a decision on the best laser TV once I'm done reviewing all these projectors. I still have to get my hands on the Samsung LS9 PT, Hisense L9, and the new Vava Chroma, but so far I think it's a close race between the BenQ V750i and the LS500, at least when it comes to picture quality. Now if you're a gamer, then the LS500 is probably gonna be your best bet, with the Hisense L5 being a good budget conscious option. But make sure you subscribe to the channel with that bell notification set to all so you get notified whenever I upload new videos. And hopefully you did find this video helpful. As always, if you did find it helpful, go ahead and make sure you mash that like button for me. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.